Lesson time. <laughs> Minor arpeggios. So I've had a couple of things up about um, major arpeggios, caged arpeggios, um, coffee. I've had all sorts of stuff up. We'll get the coffee to keep me up. Minor arpeggios are weird when you try to think of them from a completely relative to the major arpeggio aspect. And sometimes you have to kind of break them up into different groupings or different portions of a major arpeggio in order to fully see the minor kind of take shape and vice versa. Like if you only really know those minor arpeggios, sometimes it takes a little bit to see the majors. I've been talking about the majors, so now I want to take a little time to talk about the minors. Um, before I get too into it, I'd like to get um, into what I have written out here on the whiteboard. We've been talking about these capitals. The When you see it listed with a capital M, or if you see uh, the numerals as capitalized like that in large, that means major, and the one leads to the one. And... What does that mean? Well, what it means is that we're making those triads where we have the root, the third, and then the fifth. And in a lot of cases, you have the seventh. Right now, I'm not really going to talk about that. We went over major seventh arpeggios. That was the second lesson in this series. And I want you to watch that before you really kind of dive into this one. Um, if you know your major seventh caged shapes, then you probably will be okay moving on and seeing how this relates. But I'm going to overlay some things here. We're going to superimpose. And we're going to talk about how these major shapes can also be found within the minor shapes and what this chart really means. So we're looking at making... A major third here, right here, would be a minor third, lowercase. So that would be root, minor third, and five on any one of the minor shapes right here. Okay, so you can see I have this orange line right here connecting the one to the sixth. Those are relative, um, and that's basic level theory um you should know that the c major and the a minor are really close to each other drop my pick they are relative to each other and it's quite common that the first thing we think of is that when we want to think of a minor or if, if we're throwing a c major dang you know us guitars have to make this that chord shape you know all the way up there it can be a little uh, a little tough to keep track of sometimes. So you, 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 if you don't know that major shape, um, you might not immediately know that this minor shape that you probably do know is relative to that. And that's that caged E shape. So our caged major arpeggio is laying out within there. Our major seventh arpeggio is laying out within there too, sort of, when you start adding those thirds or when you start to get into that modal phone number that I've spoken about. That, if we were thinking of C major relative, relative to A minor, A minor being this now sixth chord that would be formed if we kept on stacking in this particular order, I'm gonna show in a second. C major and A minor they sound nice together this is the base of many songs um, but that relative movement movement gives us other chords and other scales and other patterns thus other triads and other arpeggios and other notes within our modal sequence or the phone number that I talk about um, that gives us options to grab these while we're creating melodies and while we're creating our solos so and it gives you compositional ideas as far as how to kind of take a couple of chords and make something out of them um 
you see the one, the four, and the five, and obviously we know a lot about about all of that. What this means is that this one, when you make a triad, let's continue in C real quick. If if you make that triad in C. <laughs> that and then go up one whole step from that C to D you wouldn't make another major triad it's showing you you would make a minor triad because the major would be that and that movement you would find here C to D major C major to D major would actually be a four to five movement Back to the G. So if that's our one then, G as the one, A is the two, B is the three. Okay, let's take that phone number shape that we know. Here's our one, here's our two. That gives us C as the four, two, three, four. Our three shape is this movement. Right? And then our four shape looks like our one shape because we have this major. And then our five shape. See there? Gives us the five, the six, and the seven. And then back to our one. But part of the thing about modal playing and modal jams and modal vamps is that you kind of don't always want to have that Ionian sound. You want to explore these options. So we have gone over the names of all the modes before google it if you don't know them we're not going to totally not going to explain them or anything again but this is a whole step let me go ahead and erase this part this we would call a whole step and then c to d is that first whole step d minor to what it's telling us the next minor chord would be E minor. That's a whole step as well. And we know that because there's our root to third. There's our minor, I mean, I'm sorry, there's our major third right there to here. That's a major third interval. That, that's an interval. Anytime you go from one note to another, that's called an interval. So here we would be creating a triad that's major, and then two minors. Next thing we would come to in the key of C would be that F major. And then a G major. And that's a half step from here, and then a whole step to here. And then it continues on. And you got a whole step, a whole step, and then a half step back to, you got a whole step back to that root. So that's the major scale. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, another whole step, half step. And that's why that Lydian mode has that raised fourth, because if you start here again on the four, starting on the four and make a major Lydian scale, you have to raise that four. You don't play. You hear how now all of a sudden that's out of the key. So that gives you the Lydian mode and that gives you your Mixolydian mode off of the five. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit. We're gonna erase these majors, okay? Hopefully you guys got that. <laughs> Hopefully I got it. And um, we're going to go ahead and look at some minor stuff. Now, it gets funny with this 7. That 7 right there has a flatted 5th within the triad. So what we're looking at now are minor chords, root, minor, 3rd, whoop, little thing there, minor, 3rd, and 5th. Same thing here. Same thing here on the sixth. This seven has a root, a minor third, and then instead of having a perfect fifth, it has a flatted fifth, uh, or the diminished fifth is in, is in there. So you would go ahead and write a five much better than I am right now, but that would be 
um, diminished. D I M. There's other ways to, to do it. I'm just writing that like that for right now, as sloppily as possible. So we're not really going to think about that one so much. Let's let's just get that out of here. And now we have some minor triads: the two, the three, and the six within our modal phone number, our minor, and within our now creating these chord progressions that we were looking at, we have minor places to go. So how are we going to do that with these caged shapes? It gets a little funny. I'm going to show you a really cool trick on how to create a minor arpeggio with a major shape. And you're going to just do one simple addition just like we did when we took the major uh, triad by itself, the root, third, and fifth. We were playing that in triplets. When we wanted to play that in quadruplets or uh, quarter notes, um, we added a seventh to it in order to make our pattern with the metronome kind of fall into place. All right, if you watch those videos, great. If you haven't, I'll try to put them up somewhere in one of these little spots. Um, oh yeah, the YouTube sayings. Like, subscribe, share. Also, don't forget to ring that bell. That'll let you know that I've put up a new video. Thank you. So I was talking about how we can have this, this four and this five next to each other. We know the five is major. So let's... Let's pretend for a minute that we are still in G, like we've been doing all of these exercises. So we have the, the G shape going, a G major, okay? But let's just for, pretend just for the sake of it that instead of doing this major, seventh, we're gonna ignore that major and we're just gonna think about this G triad. I'm looking at uh, trying to figure out how I want to jam on a progression that is going to go and involve just like one or two chords and really probably center around this minor feel that I'm going. Now, do I want Phrygian? Do I want Locrian? Well, probably not. We've taken that Locrian off. But do I want this Phrygian mode here? Do I want um, Dorian mode, which is going to have a raised sixth within the natural minor scale? Or do I want to stay natural minor? That's going to kind of come to my ears, and it's also going to kind of come to what the chord sequence is telling me. I already kind of have an idea in my head that I know I want to stay in this natural minor because we've been talking about the key of C major. A fifth away, we can find that G major. So go down a fourth to get to a G, but if you went from C to G, up a fifth. So there's that movement, and this is found within those exercises that I was talking about, that G shape. There's that movement, G to C, so we're kind of talking about going backwards here at the moment, but then looking at it from an A perspective, right? Because we want to talk about it not from this C major happy sound, we want to talk about it more from this A minor sound. So instead of featuring the C note as the root, I'm going to look at it with this A note on the E string, 5th fret, and still see that makes this A minor shape. So imagine your E major shape, and then lift this finger up so that the major third is lower to half step, and we get a minor third. So that's our minor shape, and then that gives us that real familiar pentatonic shape that we all know and love. And so how we can find in our picture over there, it's, it's telling me that I, I, I need to check out Rick Beato. If you haven't checked out Rick Beato, you absolutely should. So if you have this A minor shape, if you have that going on, you basically are looking at this C shape and taking the same kind of triad, but moving it to feature this A, and then we have we have notes from that pentatonic in there. So how are we going to find some triads 
that are arpeggios to work with that are major, you're asking me. Well, let's say that we have, we know we have C major, and we know that our major arpeggios um, with the root on the sixth string, we have an E shape, but we also have this G shape. So our nut here, we're gonna move it up here to make a G shape and still kind of have the C as our root note now. So instead of playing an E shape, we're gonna play a G shape. So there's the arpeggio of C major in a G shape. So, but if we add an A to that, instead of adding the major seventh here, if we add this major sixth within a G arpeggio, or if we just think to ourselves, I need to make sure I add my root notes to this, and we're gonna find those roots here on the E string at the fifth fret, the seventh fret, and again on the high E string at the fifth fret. So if I just think to myself, I need to make this G major shape, but I need to add these A notes into it. You can, you can see them come out. And it's interesting if you skip an A somewhere, and maybe it works out timing-wise. There, it, This is more, at this point, about target notes and where you're going to. There's an A that's now slid you out of position. So now we're here in this A. We've taken ourselves to possibly an uncomfortable spot, but we do know we have an A here at our 12th fret. So, oh, okay, great, great news, right? But then you think to yourself, oh, I can't use this box position up here. Well, you kind of still can because that box position is really similar to what you find here. It still has those that same beginning shape, but now instead of going and continuing that shape here, how we go, we're now gonna go here and go 12, 15, 12, 14, 12, 14, and then instead of continuing that shape, we have to slide up and account for that B string shift and go 13, 15. And so you can do it with this finger or you can, depending on where you're going, you know? Or if you're gonna stay in position. So you see, now we found another A note and let's say we want to still, we're, we're, we're jamming and we've worked our way up here. We want to kind of figure out where we can lay this A and find a comfort zone. Well, we know we have already established that C major is safe. So anywhere within that shape, we can now add that A shape. Here's our C. Let's strip it down a little bit on the 10th fret D string, 9th fret G string, and then B string, 8th uh, eighth fret. So you got that little, and then 10th fret hammer on to the A on the B string. And there's our A, open A. There's our A roots on the D string. There it is here. Um, again, would be the open thing. There's an A and there's an A. So now we have all these little reference points for us to continue working those pentatonic positions that we know. A coffee break, product placement. That A and G now we know if we play G, anything related to G, we want to hear a major and then minor against the A. Because we have A minor and G major, and it's actually a G dominant because it has an F in it. 
it's we're looking at the five if we talk about that modal phone number our five sequences is, is is really easy to memorize so if we're looking at g mixolydian or the fifth mode then you're looking at three five seven three five seven three five seven across strings e a and d g major but with an f in it And then pulling off that seven to five on that last string gives you the root again. Or shifting up and then shifting for the B. There's your G. So that gives us G mixolydian to work with over this A minor. And then you can accent it by bringing out that A that we were talking about, how you add to it. So we can also now think of it as adding what we were talking about, how there's another major chord a whole step away here from, from G major. When you're in the key of C, the four chord is major as well. And that's going to be F. I'll just keep a capital, but it's officially an F major seven. So your A minor chord, and then you would have a G jom, dominant chord, dominant. It's dominant mon. Um, and then you would have instead of just an F major chord, you would lower this root note a half step here. And this is a nice chord to voice. You see, it's it's even got an A minor in it. Now you're looking at an F. You can skip this C here, it's kind of redundant, it happens here. You have an F and then you have an E note, which is a major seven from E from F, and then an A and a C. So you can skip it there because it gets a little dark and muddy. So you hear there's a four, oops, five, six of C major without playing a C major. And you hear that C major takes you home, but if you just kind of hang around in this zone here, in this A minor zone, you're gonna start exploring um, what we would call a natural minor, or we would be exploring the uh, Aeolian mode, which is basically looking at this pentatonic minor shape. adding an F. So the same kind of thing that we've done here, up here in A, uh, I'm sorry, on the 12th position in regular old A minor, how we've kind of changed the shape a little bit. Well, we're going to do that here by adding that to it. So now we have, and we also have in our sixth shape, we have a major second interval happening because the six, the seven is a B, and then C to keep it in key, there's the one again, but we're here in A minor. So there's A, Aeolian, and then that would be G Mixolydian, F Lydian. I kind of like that movement right there. Um, and like, subscribe, share. Don't forget to click the bell. Um, subscribe to Double D Guitar. Subscribe to Rick Beato. Subscribe to Signals Music Studio. Um, they're great. Subscribe to Scar My Guitar. Um, if you haven't heard of Scar My Guitar, they're awesome. Tell Sean Double D sent you. Anybody that you subscribe to, tell them Double D sent you in the comment of the first video you watch. <laughs> Just do it. All right, so the first part of the jam that little kind of single note riff like almost like a bass line and then some chords that A minor A minor to G up to A again minor and then let's add a little jump here. So I can think pentatonic. Thank you. 
Mm-hmm.